when I was in Japan, I was not interested in sake at all. My father was, you know, big time sake drinker, shoju drinker, whiskey drinker every day. Uh, I so I grew up watching my father drinking a lot of sake every day. Yeah. <laughs> but I was not really a big fan of it. And I was just playing music when I was in Japan. I came here about 18 years ago from Japan. It was the year 2000. And uh, I was gonna stay only three months and then going back to Japan. And you know, but I just kept extending my stay in now 18 years past. Um, I was still playing music when I came here in United States. I was in three bands, and the gigging and the recording. I was playing bass. And the, uh, about 11 years ago, 12 years ago, the uh, owner of the uh, Tsunami Sushi Restaurant, uh, yeah, he, he actually opened up the sake shop, the sake wine shop, and the, uh, it's gone now. So he asked me to manage that spot. And I said no, because I had the band, I couldn't be you know, responsible for the uh, management work. Right, so I right. said no, and uh, they hired someone, and that person quit, and uh, the owner asked me again, hey, take a chance, you wanna do that, Yoshi? And uh, I said yes. Then my sake actually journey started from there. Then I got more around about sake, I felt like, you know, I think, educating people about sake it's more like you know educating people about you know japanese tradition and my own identity so i, I found that so fun and so rewarding for me so i just kept going and the uh, after five years you know i kind of like did apprenticeship at the sake breweries in my hometown and I came back here, I kind of started to teach people about sake. And now the Yuzuki, the restaurant Yuzuki in the Michigan area. Right. Yeah. yeah. So the owner of the Yuzuki, Yuko, found me and he, she wanted me to walk there as a sake sommelier. And I took that position. You know, Yuzuki is a very, uh, and the back then it was so, so uh, kind of new because, you know, her restaurant style, you know, they made everything from scratch, kind of exactly a style, and uh, super dedicated food. And she was so keen, she's so keen to the uh, those pairing concept. And uh, I learned a lot walking through the Yuzuki, you know, especially those what kind of sake go well with, you know, what kind of food and what kind of elements in sake go well or what doesn't go really well. And also, I learned a lot about wine too. I mean, from the uh, the shop that Tsunami's owner owned, I learned a lot of wine there too, but at the Yuzuki, carried some wines and we met a lot of uh, wine songs and uh, wine directors there too. And uh, I learned a lot of wines over there too. So it was, you know, my background is you know, some sake and wine kind of together. And, uh, you know, that's, that's why maybe I'm making sake right now you know, to appeal to more wine drinkers. Okay. Yeah. 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 Makes sense. sense. Yeah. Since we're California wine country. Yeah. Getting people accustomed to drinking sake. It's really starting to blow up in the Bay Area too, uh -huh. which is really exciting. Yeah. And so you started um, in a friend's backyard. Mm hmm. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So like 2015. Yeah. Right. Right. So tell us a little bit about that and how that transpired into you know being. Here. Yeah, uh, so, you know, I, as I said, I started teaching sake class to people and the, uh, you know, I kind of found how, I was always thinking how much I can gain the knowledge of sake, you know, to teach people here. Mm -hmm. And I just, you know, I thought I'm brewing is the, probably the best way to, you know, go into more deeper area and the sake knowledge so uh, I kind of started to do the test brewing and uh, you know we were planning to kind of opening a sake brewery maybe in the future but I was not super sure about it mm -hmm. but we just you know wanted to try it right, right. so uh, we bought this walking cooler here and uh, also we set up the uh, tent as oh, a closure okay. 
uh, outside space in my friend's backyard. Really, like a, a camping tent. Camping tent. Whoa. And uh, the outside, it's a double layered actually tent. You know, the uh, canopy outside. Okay. And the inside, the tent. But it's like a tent. It's not like a tent. It's more like a, how do you call it? It's called the. Uh, Greenhouse? Yeah, it's more like okay. greenhouse, you know, like the mitre fabric, you know, those silver material, mitre fabric. And people mm -hmm. use it for marijuana growing. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. So, I, you know, good insulation too. So, it just, yeah. uh, I thought that this is a great thing. And uh, I started using that. I built that in, the, you know, my friend's backyard. And uh, we, we brought this, we bought this walking cooler as a fermentation room. And uh, we set up the uh, electric stove inside of the Koji tent. And uh, yeah, that's how actually uh, we started. And we actually invited one, uh, the master brewer, Shiokawa-san. Uh, she is, you know, known as a cowboy yamhai. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Yes. You make up a cowboy yamhai. Yeah. So he actually spent almost 10 days to two weeks with me. He was staying at my place, and uh, every day we go to the, my friend's patio and uh, uh, start brewing sake together. So that was super, super, you know, uh, uh, precious time for me because, you know, the water here, rice here, is totally different conditions, totally different in right. Japan. So it was really good to have Shiokawa-san here so that he can kind of like adjust how we can brew sake using this, you know, water from here and the rice from here. Mm -hmm. So, you know, because all the numbers I can get from the sake brewing kind of books or textbook in Japan cannot be transferred to, you know, this area because all the ingredients are so different. And Totally like different. Right. Uh, for example, like a real rice, you know, water absorption ratio for the rice, that's numbers that they usually need to get. It's totally different. We need to get much, much higher water absorption ratio here to the rice to be dissolved in the mush. Mm -hmm. So those kind of things, you know, I learned a lot because you know Shoka some was here in the brewing, you know, using all the ingredients here together. Wow. So rice, rice by itself, that's probably really different. You know, as you said, we using a table rice instead of sake rice. You know, back then. Now there's one actually farmer grows Yamata Nishiki rice, uh, sake rice in California. Mm -hmm. uh, but you know, when I started it, uh, when you go here, uh, there's no no one uh, growing a sake rice in California. So I. Also, I kind of, I have kind of confidence that what any kind of rice probably, you know, if I do good, I can make good sake out of any type of rice. Really? Yeah. So that's why I chose karuhikari rice. There's no proof that karuhikari rice can make good sake because no one probably Let's uses karuhikari. Yeah. yeah. I think we are the only one brewery in the world using karuhikari rice. I think. As far as I know, yeah, there's a lot of breweries like uh, you know American breweries using cowboys, right. for example. Yeah, and then you can get Yamanishiki, which is going to be a little bit more expensive. Yeah, probably a little bit more consistent, uh -huh. right? Uh -huh. um, but the fact that you're still making it work is is, is pretty cool. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. How often do you get a day off? Ah, uh, wow, good question. <laughs> <laughs> so I, for example, this batch four. We are making right now. I mean, I just pressed. So I started it about two months ago. Then uh, yesterday is the only day I didn't have to do. I didn't have to come here to the pool. So maybe I don't know. <laughs> Once every couple months. Yeah, yeah, something like that. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Cool. So how do you like uh, being in Oakland? How do you? You know, people really embrace yeah. the sake scene and the Japanese food culture and everything that comes with it. Mm -hmm. um, being being an open, you feel like it's a, a good. You're in a good place here. Yeah, I get it. Um, 
Auckland people are so kind of like supportive to each other. Uh, more community, I think, oriented. And uh, I think something, you know, I'm using a kind of very traditional, you know, technique to brew sake, but at the same time, I don't want to make super, you know, like sake tastes like Japan. You know, it's it right. tastes like from Japan. Mm. You know, it's just I want to create something, you know, more sake from here, California style. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So you know, something like those doing something new stuff. I think Oakland people can like, accept more of those kind of thing. Right. But probably because they are not super exposed to a Japanese culture yet. So that's mm. why that's a good call. Actually, yeah. So I can explain a lot of you know new stuff. Yeah. yeah. I think yeah, I think you're in a good place here, Bay Area. Yeah. People really embracing what's new and what's different. So. Yeah. And then you're also on. Uh, he's also on the cover of uh, Sake Today. Yeah. Here as well. Um, yeah, right. There's a really nice article in here, um, not only about your operation but um, just Oakland, the Oakland scene as well. Mm-hmm. Here, so a little bit about you know uh, Oakland and how. Um, people here are really embracing the scene, a little bit about um, his operation, how he got started, and then a little bit about uh, Umami Mart as well, which uh, we might take a visit here in a little bit too. Um, they, they have a lot of uh, Japanese whiskey, sake, beer, custom glassware, um, owned, uh, owned and uh, operated by uh, two female entrepreneurs, which uh, shout out to uh, Kayoko and Yoko. So. Um, yeah, Sake Today. Go to sakeToday.com to get your subscription and uh, check out Yoshi-san's operation and what we're doing here in the Bay Area. So, Yoshi, thank you so much thank for you giving us a tour it. and uh, we really appreciate it and we're looking forward to trying Batch 4 as well. Thank you. So, all right, thank you guys. Uh, thank you. Like, subscribe, and uh, come by.